Yes, hi guys, welcome to the third lesson for the 3D modeling uh, online class. Um, this is a little bit different than the first two lessons. It's not really new. It's kind of a rehearsal from the second lesson on a much faster way. On the second lesson, I spend a lot of time explaining transformations. And when I talk about transformations, I talk about move, rotate, scale, and also align snap measurements. But I feel while it was quite a long lesson, I still missed explaining a few of them. And also I feel I designed what I was doing in quite a tedious way, um, even if it was quite fast, but we can make it much faster. I just wanted to show the local transformations and moving faces and those type of stuff. So now we're gonna speed model much faster and also fill in the parts that I feel I, feel I missed last time. And then we'll call it uh, finished with transformations. We'll be able to move on uh, to the next. So let's get started. I have my settings over here still saved from last time. So this gives me this object. I'm going to rename this to base. Uh, you'll see later why I need the name. And now I'm going to go to the copy offset and hopefully it's still saved my macro. So yes, I have my Corona to macro and I do this, this is fine, okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna add a cylinder and you remember last time uh, in the second lesson I explained that 12.5 radius is the same as 25 size. So basically I'm using this and I'm just making the height would be, I think, oh, the height should be 205. That's what we did last time, the height of 205 because I'm sticking it in five. And now I'm gonna show you how I can align. This is what I think I didn't cover last time, the align tool. So I'm gonna choose over here the reason I need to rename it, otherwise you couldn't really find it. So I'm doing finding just the base. Uh, others I see made a, uh, it tells me the workspace may potentially get sized differently because depending where it puts it, it puts it by default the bottom. So I'm putting it actually on the top and I'm putting it not on the center. I'm going to, actually I can put it in the center. I can put it on the other side. I have to look, this is the front side, right side. I can put it on the right side, but I have to make an offset. You see on the right side, it puts it completely on the right side and it's completely outside. So let's even put it in the center and I'm gonna show you the measurement. So if you remember last time we had this on by 25 in. So if I need to 25 in, first of all, let's divide this. This is 300, so half of it would be 150. If I put it 150 because we measure from the center, this will be sticking out half. So let's give it a try and show you how it's gonna work. So if I make 150, you see it sticks out, half of this will stick out. So I actually need to ac accommodate for half and the half, if this is a radius of 12.5, so it's a size of 25 and a radius of, of a, a half would be a size of 12.5. And then I needed to move it in 12, uh, 25, which gives me a 37, which minus 150, it leaves me of 112.5 would be the proper position over here. And then I need the Y, I need this to be negative because the Y is not, this is relative. This is a relative to the surface where I'm putting it on. So the surface over here is the height of 25. So I'm putting it relative to that. Zero means on top of it without going down. So if you rotate and you see there is a, a box over here um, that looks like it's bursting through, it's not. This is a selection box. When you select something, it creates the same way you see it over here, creates like a box around that. It's called a, a cube selection or um, selection box, whatever it's used in, in technical terms, but this is not the object. Uh, so I need to put it into the surface five. So put it negative five, so minus five. So that's why we made this 205. So it sticks out by five. And that's basically position. So you see the line was really nice, uh, good to position. And now I'm going to make a copy the same way I did it last time. So I'm gonna hold down my control key. So that in this case, we'll make a copy. But the first I made a mistake, I have to look at this position It's 37 not the combined position, just this position. You see, I should have used the first. Okay, so it's 112.5 is the X position. Um, so I need to, there's another way actually besides exiting, you see what I just did. If you select two, you can actually select the other one. Now it gives you an average position from both. You can just click on this to deselect. Instead of deselecting, everything will close the tool. So you can just make it this way. So now I need to make it minus 112.5. And this gives it to me the same position. Okay, now I'm going to select both of them and you're going to use the same copy offset macro so you can actually work with multiple objects. So I'm going to go to finding the same object over here and I'll make the copies. And as last time, I'll you need to select the first two 
and I'm going to merge them. Actually, I'll tell you why I merged them. You can actually don't need to merge them. You can later just select all, make a union. But <coughs> the union, it will still work. I tested it, it takes like two seconds. But still a good practice to merge because the union will need to work on each object separately. And there's no reason this has to be separate objects. Um, that may not be the case with the cubes because I said last time that usually it's not a good idea to have it flushed. That's why I'm putting this inside. I'm not putting it on the surface. While these cubes, I put it flushed to each other. They touch each other without going into each other, which is not a good practice. I have to clarify that. It's not a good practice. It must be in. I should probably make this a slightly bigger and each one go into each other. But I tried it multiple times and this self get stool had no issues. But in general, that's not a good practice. So that's why over here I, I put it in. Um, so I leave this out just in case it may need to process each one separately. But I, I think actually it shouldn't be a problem. But now what I'm going to do is I want to show the ID. Actually, let's first merge everything. Um, make sure we select all. And I want to show an idea how you can select all. You see, you have this selected. If I'm going to over here inverse select, it will select everything except this. Okay. It tells me mesh wireframe. I don't care. So this is, you know, select everything. And I can then go and select this. Now everything is selected. But that's not always the case. So first of all, let's click over here to deselect everything. There's an option over here to select all, and there's a control plus A to select all. And in general, with the hotkeys, I touched last time by the hotkey set how I like the way the hotkeys are done. It's very intuitive. But that said, that's only the things that are kind of like new tools or specifically 3D. Tools that are very commonly used, like select all or things that are famous, like for example, undo and redo, is using command Z and things that you used to from any other software. So that's basically um, the same as any other software. Um, but nevertheless, so you can click from here to select all, or if nothing is selected, when you inverse select, you basically select everything. That's kind of the concept. If everything is selected, inverse select will deselect everything. So I find this just the easiest way to select all, just handy. And then let's do the Boolean. And just to make sure, it's not really to put together everything in one Boolean in case you have some issues here and have issues with everything you find out early. That's the only reason I did it. So let's now uh, position this to the center. Um, you see what I did actually double click? You can open it and click center objects, or you can just double click. We'll do the same thing. So now what it's new is I'm going to show rotation about measuring the angles over here. So what I'm going to do is uh, let's take a look at the measurement tool over here. I'm going to use this measurement tool and I want to show how rotation angles are working. So if I'm going to measure from here to here and then going down uh, to here to get an angle, you see, we get an angle of, of 400. Okay, is it? No, that's not incorrect. I, I didn't position it correctly. So let's see. If I measure snapping it from here to here, and then I put it down to here, yeah, it's an angle of 400. Um, if I'm going to put it in the other way around, if I'm going to put it from this over here, this point to this point, and then measure it to this point. Oh, I'm putting length. I'm sorry. What did I do? Okay. I, have to, I saw something is wrong. I have to measure angle. Okay, so if we go from angle from here to here, um, and then go here, this is 270. The angle is 270. Whereas if I'm going to do the opposite way, I'm going to do it from um, here, start from this point to this point, and then move it up to this point, you see I get 333.43. And what I need now is this angle, because it depends what you're rotating around. So let me take an example, show this. So I'm going to take now a new object, and let's position this object. And if I'm going to, first of all, I need this to be rotated the same way this will be rotated. So I first need to rotate this by 90 degree. Okay, so around the Y by 90 degrees, so I get it like this. But now, if I'm going to make this the same angle as this, I need this to be um, rotated by... Let's see, but first I rotate that, I want to make the size, otherwise I'll have the same issue with local transformation. So first let's measure the size from here to here, this size. Um, so let's go back to the measurements over here, and let's measure the size from, uh, let's go back now to length, make sure we have length, not angle. So now I'm going to measure the size from here to here, and it's 894.43. So I'm going to put it 900 just to um, round it up. So I need the size to be in the Z direction to 900. So we have a size of 900. And you can't see it because it goes into the object. And now we're going to rotate this around the X by minus 333.43, 
which you see this doesn't work because I have to do it, I guess, the positive. So 333.43. So, okay, so you see now this gave me actually the nice angle, the exact angle we needed. We struggled last time to position it. And now I just need to position it and I can position it um, using the exact measurements, I guess, also. But let me just take for now, just put it on place over here. And let's move it up by uh, 200. So, so it puts it over here. I need it to make it a little bit more. 205. And let's move it over here. So 205 is still, okay, I had it like, what is it, 220, I guess, right? So it should be coming out, okay. And now I need to position this a little bit down but as i move it i uh, need to move it down then again because it positions the size of center over here so let's just move it down a little bit and okay just to make sure it sticks out in a way another way you can do that and this is another thing actually i missed from the first lesson i didn't say if you want to zoom into something you can hover the mouse and use your cursor and we'll zoom into this location if you want to zoom into the top you can just hover here and we'll zoom into this so now i want to zoom into this i'm going to look at the wireframe mode just wireframe and see if it sticks in so let's actually zoom into this let's see you see it sticks in nicely each of them sticks in nicely so now all i'm going to do is this is i'm going to make a copy and i see this is 114 so i'm going to make a copy and put it negative 114 so negative 114 okay and now we're going to select all select this and select this and we're going to make a boolean again a union operation to combine them and here you go so you can see actually now how fast this union worked even the object the same size because it matters the amount of pieces you have so just a general thought um, now I want to show another thing so first of all let's finalize what we did last time where you see this has these pieces I wanted them to move them I wanted to go resolution zero first to kind of process them so I can move them I added a um, add details and Last time I showed, I actually dragged this down. You don't actually have to drag and just click. The only thing is, you see, it goes different directions. So if you don't drag, it may sometimes jump around. That's why it's better to drag. But if you know what you're doing, you can put it over here. The only difference is, if you don't drag, this wouldn't update. You can still type in, but as you move it, it will update, and otherwise it wouldn't. So last time I dragged them. Now you can just click on it and put it over here, 50. Uh, but many times it gets confused, so you need to drag. So this is kind of like this and then what we showed is i went to this edge over here and i went again to the utilities the snap tool and i made sure to get this green arrow the center snap it and then i deselect everything and then you go to uh, in utils there is the remove duplicates so we make sure we remove all of the duplicates and we're good to go so this is where we finished last time now i want to show some other idea is that how you can actually put this on the surface because if you're going to 3d print this uh, you will have an issue because you'll have a lot of support structure we'll do in later videos explain the printer you have over here 3d print which will open a slicer and you'll be able to print them but in general you can't print something at 10 years so you need to kind of move this down and put it onto the surface in the 3d print a tool you have a tool that it's called uh, place um, on bed and you click something and places it over here, um, I said yesterday that I really like the idea of how it is multi-purpose self-cut. So in this case, we have our friendly snap tool. Again, I used it just a minute ago to snap edges, but now if I take a complete object but nothing is selected, I can actually use it to do this. So I'll first have to turn on magnet and I'll show a minute what magnet is. And then I'll put, before I do something, I'll click on manual origin and I'll click on this origin and this selects over here and then I click over here to snap it and that's it look how it's positioned beautifully on this um, where the magnet is this is a two-step approach because it's a multi-purpose tool you can do a lot more you can use magnet without snapping you can use it with manual without manual all this stuff so to show you what magnet is doing is one more tool I didn't show in the move tool and let me show that so if you have an object like this and then you're going to add let's say a cone 
and you want this cone to be placed over here and rotated. So instead of going rotating this 90 degree in position, you have all of this. There's an option in the move tool, which is also called snap, and it has the same settings. You can have man manual gizmo position or choose from this. But if you turn on the magnet, um, this is actually the same setting gizmo position that will work for the entire thing, but it will also affect the magnet. So if you go to the magnet now and you move this, look how it positions automatically. So it tells me the workspace because I put it too low, but um, this basically, you see, is kind of positioning it. So if I rotate it this way or this way, whichever way, you see now I get confused, so I can go and put the magnet. If I want the top to be put over here, I can click on manual gizmo position, for example, and snap it. Oops, I clicked over here, so it will kind of give it a small angle, you see. I can click, make sure, don't show this message again. And you see I can click over here, if I can only get to it. But you can see the idea, you can snap over here. Let's see, just snap to the center. Maybe the position, snap over here. And now you can put it magnet. So this will kind of will put it over here like this. See, so this is what magnet is doing. So in the snap tool, it's built in over there feature as well. Um, so that's it basically. I think now we covered all of the transformation, basic positioning. You can position using a line, snap, measurements is helping to set up these things. You have the move rotate scale. And I hope the next lesson will start doing a lot more about design thinking. So just to give you a hint, if you look at this, for example, you could think about this staircase the way it's supposed to be originally, or you could think about it something like this, where you can do it even on a 2D page, and then lift it up. So, and then also for designing for, pro, for printing, one example is how to put it in the bed, the way you did it now, but other example could be how to make things into pieces if it's bigger than the printer size, but also if you need to uh, kind of make it an assembly and different pieces and assemble other things. So I hope the next lesson we'll start doing that and also start moving, as we said in the previous lesson, to the more advanced tools and so on. Um, I want to say I'm sorry also if you hear this background noise. I said in my first video, I'm basically homeschooling. Um, so that's unfortunately now with the coronavirus. So there's a lot of a lot going on and um, I'm glad I can share with you guys this and hopefully some of you will benefit from it but um, basically we are all working at home now um, so okay uh, hope you enjoy it and let me know what you think thank you